Today, I'm going to give you a detailed explanation about INCO terms for import-export global trade. Hope this can be helpful for those of you who want to study the INCO terms. So first, what are INCO terms? Shipping goods across borders can be tricky. There are so many factors to consider for both importers and exporters, and this is why INCO terms were created. In international commerce, INCO terms are a set of three-letter abbreviated trade terms established by the International Chamber of Commerce, the ICC, to communicate different aspects of cross-border trade. There are 11 main INCO terms in use. INCO terms' primary function is to set the responsibilities of a seller and a buyer in a shipping agreement. For both Alibaba.com seller and buyer, it is important to familiarize yourself with the details of each INCO term, so you can choose the one that makes the most sense for your next shipment. Okay, next, you want to understand the responsibilities connected to INCO terms. Basically, INCO terms define the following rules of the shipment process. First, shipping and freight costs. INCO terms dictate which party will be responsible for the cost of shipping and freight. Second, the point of delivery. INCO terms indicate the point at which the responsibilities are transferred from the seller to the buyer, which is called the delivery point. Third, import and export regulations. INCO terms dictate which party organizes the procedures used in the importation and exportation. And the last one is insurance cover. INCO terms outline who is responsible for the costs of insurance. Then let's talk about different INCO terms groups. INCO terms can be sorted into four different groups. The first group is E type which includes EXW, meaning the seller bears little cost and responsibility. The second group is F-type, including FOB, FCA, and FAS. For this type, the seller is responsible for transporting the goods to the buyer's predefined transport medium, and then the buyer assumes all responsibilities from that point onwards. The third group is the C-type, including CFR, CIF, CPT, and CIP. Here, the seller bears all costs and responsibility to the destination port. Then the risks are transferred to the buyers once the goods are loaded on the means of transport. And the last group is D-type, including DDP and DAP. And here, the seller bears maximum responsibility for cost and risks. You can see as you move from E to D type, the buyer's risk and responsibility decreases, while the seller's risk and responsibility and control increases. Okay, next, we're gonna explain which INCO terms can be applied to which mode of transport. You need to know that not all INCO terms are suitable for all kinds of international shipments. Depending on your mode of transport, such as maritime, air, road, rail, etc., you may have to choose one over another. Please see the tables below for which INCO terms can be applied to which mode of transportation for your reference. Okay. Now we're going to talk about some of the most important and popular INCO terms. Since from responsibilities in international shipping to customers' clearance, duties payment, and insurance, there are many factors to consider when choosing INCO terms. Below, we list out some of the most important and most commonly used INCO terms, and we will help you to understand each of them. The first one, XWorks, the EXW. XWorks places a minimal burden on the seller. 
The buyer must arrange and pay for all transportation and is also responsible for container loading. Seller does not need to load the goods on any collecting vehicle, nor does it need to clear the goods for export. The second one, free on board, FOB. Here, the seller is responsible for all the costs and responsibilities and clearing the goods for export until the goods have crossed the ship rail at the original port. And then the buyer assumes all costs responsibilities, and risks after that point. The third one, cost and freight, the CFR. With CFR, seller arranges the transport of goods to the named port. The seller delivers goods, cleared for export, loaded on board the vessel. Then the risks are transferred to the buyer once the goods are loaded on board. The first one, Cost Insurance and Freight, the CIF. This INCO term is the same as Cost and Freight, the CFR, just with the added responsibility that the seller also pays for the insurance. And the next one is Carriage Paid To, the CPT. With CPT, the seller delivers goods to a carrier and has full responsibility to cover the cost of the carriage of goods to the destination. All risks and costs transfer to the buyer after delivery of the goods. And the sixth one is carriage and insurance paid to, the CIP. As with CPT, the seller is responsible for delivering the goods to a carrier and also paying the cost of transport. Here, the seller is also responsible for insuring the goods. Next one, delivered at place, the DAP. Here, the seller is responsible for delivering the goods, ready for unloading from the arriving means of transport at the named place. The buyer is responsible for import clearance and any applicable local taxes and import duties. And the last one is delivered duty paid, the DDP. Here, the seller assumes all cost, responsibility, and risk until goods are delivered to the buyer. That means the seller also pays for import clearance duties, insurance, and any other expenses related. So, as you can see, there are varying levels of risk for the buyer and the seller. Reference the graphic below to learn more about the obligations of the buyer and seller under different INCO terms. Alright, so the last point I'm gonna talk about is how to choose the right INCO term. Choosing the INCO term that best suits your international shipment can be challenging as it's a process into which you need to put much thought. So how should you decide which is right for you? The biggest factor is the experience level. FOB is the most popular INCO term and is often agreeable to both the buyer and seller. As a partnership, FOB often makes the most sense to have the seller be responsible for the goods when they are on his or her home soil and then the buyer takes over for the overseas transit. Seller's risks end once the cargo gets on the boat and the buyer still has control over all expenses and the coordination of the cargo delivery to their final destination. If you are a more experienced importer and want to have absolute control over the shipping process and associated costs, and feel comfortable to take on more risk and responsibility to get it, you may want to choose EXW. While EXW places a minimum obligation on the seller, DDP represents the maximum obligation. It is the only rule that requires the seller to be responsible for import clearance and payment of duties and taxes. Therefore, the seller may also need to acquire an import license. An experienced seller can benefit from this system 
as they would have total control over costs, including factors to maximize their profit. However, importers or buyers who have more experience are more likely to avoid this shipping agreement. We don't generally recommend DDP for ocean shipping. However, it is more common and makes more sense for air express or parcel shipping. We will introduce more potential risk about using DDP shipping from China in another video. Since some DDP might have some illegal things involved, which will be harmful to your business, and we will talk more about this knowledge in the video next time. Okay, that's all we have for today. If you have any comments or concerns, please feel free to contact us or leave your comment below. And if you like our video, don't forget to click the subscribe so you won't miss our next video. Thank you again and hope all of you have a nice day.